Hey everybody, Model Man here with more of the Mobius Jupiter 2. And at this point we're looking at sequencers, soldering sequencers, and preliminarily installing sequencers as well. So what I've got in front of me is every sequencer I've ever gotten from Elliot Brown over at Fedoratron.com and Warmplastic.com. And we've gone from his normal sequencer, which had several variations, and I'll show you that in a second all the way up to the recent Model Man Tom modification which is designed to fit into the wall of the Jupiter 2 itself. Dig into your computer case stuff and you'll probably find motherboard stands. You can use one, two, or three of those to help install it into the Jupiter 2. This board makes installation so convenient it's amazing. More on that later. So what we have here overall is two bagged sequencers, one of which has two board options and one of those of which is actually pre-drilled. We've got a pulsator here which may or may not still be used in the Jupiter 2, I'm not as sure. Well. But Over here I've got three sequencer boards soldered. This is the very first one I ever did and it wouldn't work at all. Elliot offered to take a look at it so I shipped it off to him. He fixed the problems and showed me where I had gone wrong and once I saw those places I was like oh that's really obvious. The lesson I learned out of that is every little trace of copper on the board you have to look over with uh, microscopic vision because the slightest cut in any of them, the slightest bit of solder that uh, doubles over onto another line, it's more than enough to short the thing out and get it not working. It'll come back to life, but you got to fix those problems, which means you got to track them down. And then this is the second and third board that I did, and this one went much easier than the first, but I still wasn't sure, and by the time I did this one, I was like, oh, okay, bop, done. It looks a little sloppy in a few places, but that's from repairs of mistakes I had made or... Uh, I had just been so casual about how well I've been getting and targeting the solder that I haven't worried about blobbing too much in. And then over here, we've got one of the Model Man Tom Jupiter 2 boards uh, pre soldered by Elliot. And sent as an example of how to put these boards together because all he has right now is that I know of is the standard instructions which are designed for this layout. If you look at this layout and compare it to this layout you can map out where things should go but it's not an exact one-to-one -one ratio you gotta look and think a little. So I'll be soldering up these two boards I need to resolder this pulsator because this guy is going to be driving uh, at least the danger ball over on the computer wall and I may solder up this pulsator as well while I'm at it simply because may as well I did trim this one far too close because now even though it looks nice and tight there's nowhere to install or uh, attach the board to anything so probably yeah I'll wind up soldering that as well I don't have the soldering iron going yet or the power supply uh, let's check out a couple of these boards work so let's check those out real quick with some power and uh, then we'll get the soldering iron going and voila I fiddled with the pulsator for a little bit but the connections are just too poor I use solid core wire on this and I really shouldn't have it's just not flexible to withstand anything one of the lights works but there's no point and even then you can't see this driving other LEDs which is the whole purpose of this. The red, green, and yellow may flash but you can make white, orange, any other color you want flash somewhere else. You can paint these over black, never need to see them, or you can use them in the model somewhere. Really handy little device, I think it's like 10 bucks. So over here is the first sequencer I built with just the three LEDs wired directly to the board to keep it simple. The 
you can have up to 10 and each one of those channels can drive two or three LEDs is my understanding the way you change the speed is with a knob over here oh no that's the intensity of the brightness to change the speed you go over to this knob over here you'll definitely want to be having a set of computer screwdrivers on hand yep so that's the slowest this will go then all of a sudden it kinda gets exponential so it's actually pulsing right now it's just pulsing so fast it can't be seen by the human eye but the camera is probably getting something maybe and with the slightest twist we're down to that speed there we go and of course the more LEDs you have in the sequence the longer it's going to take to get back to the first one which kind of extends its off time but the on time seems to be about two seconds I don't know what you would change in here probably the capacitor to store more energy I would guess but I'm not sure on that So that was the board that I failed to do and Elliot fixed. One other modification I did to this is I happen to have uh, a bag of chips from Modeler's brand which includes stands for chips so if the chip dies you can replace it nice and easy without soldering and when you're soldering you don't have to worry about burning the chip out with too much heat because you're actually soldering the socket not the chip which is off board when you do your soldering It could be considered extraneous, but for me it's uh, a little bit, little bit more of a security measure. But when I went to do my second board, I went straight with the chip. It's not going to be a real problem, it's just an extra level of comfort for yourself if you choose to do something like that. So here's the next board. There we go. Yeah, so that flaky behavior you just saw there was caused by crossed wires resetting. So that's the brightness. That resistor is freaking hot. Yeah, I think a flathead is your better choice overall for uh, screwdrivers to have on hand. So again about two seconds So again, brightness. And speed. I don't know if I just didn't wire the second note. The second LED isn't in the chain at all. It's just skipping over it. There we go. Nope. That was a bad solder joint on my part. Now it's in line. Well, I felt very comfortable with soldering this one, clearly I still made a mistake. So let's get the soldering iron primed up.
I keep a bottle of water handy so I can soak the sponge real quick for when I'm soldering. That way I don't have to go all the way out to the kitchen or the bathroom and get the water there. However, to make sure I never drink out of the water that could be sitting around here forever, I put a few warnings on there for myself. And because I'm around electronics, I'm sure to keep the cap very, very tight.